You know, my relationship with Donald was based on his basketball um, history. But in fact, he was, he was probably more of an entrepreneur than he was an athlete. He had his own variety show on TV. He showed all these old videos, these old jazz videos back in the 40s and the 50s. You know, it was like getting an education of black history and black musicians. At that time, television was not as big as it is today, and especially for uh, black people then. All of the things around the center of our lives came from radio. When black people try to branch off today, there is no way, it seems to be, that they can do it with as great a versatility as, say, Don was able at that time. And it could be because Don was one of the first to do it. The TOC, to me, was a showcase for the best basketball talent in Northern California. I mean, these are the kind of people that you saw them and you left the game and you'd say, wow. We called him the dream, Gene the dream, and he was more of the exciting type. You could tell that he was going to be a great basketball player. The TOC was the Super Bowl of, of prep basketball in this area. I lived at the California Hotel for many years, and a lot of people didn't know I was the entertainer. Jay Payton was sort of the central figure in all this scene, uh, uh, as, as the MC of so many of the shows at the Paramount and the Coliseum. At almost any rhythm and blues event, Jay Payton was the MC. I uh, remember back in the days when the shadow box was a uh, part of the white club. It was something like a curtain. You could see the people dancing and doing their gyrations, but you couldn't tell whether they were black or white. George Eva stood out well in that area because she could dance. Every year, all these people get together and they go down to the Segunda Barrio and they put together this camp. It's mostly kids from the Barrio, but they bring kids from from all their other parts of El Paso. So, they, so you have this incredible mixture of, of economic classes of these kids doing things together and playing. And it's, a, it's not only about basketball, of course, if you're there for any length of time, you know it's not about basketball. Basketball is sort of like a scam. The real thing is about culture. At the airport, we'd come in. Once he got to the big leagues, he'd walk way down to the end. Lynn had some guys coming down and pink Cadillacs picking him up at Dodger Stadium and stuff and he would sneak out the back. He would always be out there waiting where all the other players would come out of the uh, clubhouse. There were times when I would try to set him up with one of my wife's cousins and there was always something wrong with them. While Burke's teammates struggled to accept their teammates' sexual orientation, Dodger's front office took a different approach, an elaborate ruse to hide it. Teams wanted you married, they wanted you settled, Everybody got married in their mid, uh, early to mid 20s. Al Campanis and Walter O'Malley had called him into their office and they talked to him and offered him $75,000 to get married. And Glenn's first thing he told me, he said to them, what his comedy self was, I guess you mean to a woman. <laughs> started laughing. And he was said that he was, you know, married and that this wouldn't get out about him being gay, and he told him no. He wasn't going to live that type of lie. I was an Olympic coach, and it was in Rome that year. So I had a wonderful experience as being a coach of a great team. Four of the players I had on my, on my Olympic team, Oscar Robertson, Jerry Lucas, Jerry West, and uh, Walter Bellamy. Now, all four of those, those ex-players are in the Hall of Fame today. Pete Newell coached part of what may be the greatest collection of amateur basketball players ever to compete in international basketball. The footprint that Coach Newell left on our game uh, at every level is a huge footprint and it'll, it'll never go away. It's the path uh, that he blazed uh, is second to none in the history of basketball. Coach Newell is the history of basketball. This was a guy who brought so many of the concepts that we have today to the game. I believe he's, he's sort of one of the saints of basketball because he had this higher calling. And to be able to achieve that 
it couldn't be about Pete Newell. He was such a reservoir of information for me. And when he spoke, I listened because there was something that I was going to learn from that uh, time and that uh, conversation together. And when you look back on this, you're going to find Pete uh, just woven through every principle you know, that's been taught. I've often said that the people who uh, leave legacies are the ones, the great painters, great writers, the great musicians, the great speakers. Um, Pete Newell had kind of all of those things. And yet, somewhere along the way, he will, he will be forgotten, um, but not by the, those who really cared about him.